This is the video lecture on managerial accounting. Now up until this point in the course, we've been practicing financial accounting. But from this point forward, for the remainder of the course, we're going to be focusing on managerial accounting. And we're going to have many different lessons and different examples that will involve managerial accounting. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about some of the differences and some of the things that are going to be with us moving forward throughout the rest of the semester. And managerial accounting does differ from financial accounting in several different ways. Now first of all, in terms of the users, remember the goal of all of our financial reporting is to communicate this information to the users so that people will be able to make decisions using our financial information. Now in financial accounting, that is mostly going to be used by the external users. These are going to be people like lenders, auditors, the government, outsiders of the company. They're going to be using our financial accounting to make decisions. And we're also going to use it somewhat internally, but really it's designed more for the outsiders so that they will understand the financial position of our company. Whereas with managerial accounting, this type of accounting is definitely focused more on the internal users, the people who are inside the company and who are ultimately going to be making decisions that will affect the company. Another difference has to do with flexibility. Now financial accounting is very controlled and it's controlled by GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And there have been many different things that we've done over the course of the course that have been because of GAAP. But with managerial accounting, we're going to see that there's a lot more flexibility. And each individual company actually has the potential to tailor their financial statements to meet their needs. So that's going to be a little bit different when we start to see the managerial accounting reports. Another difference has to do with timeliness. Now in financial accounting, before the financial statements are published, they have to be audited. And the auditing process takes time. So if you think about it, by the time we record everything, by the time we process the information, by the time we get the initial versions of the financial statements prepared. Then we have the auditors come in and check everything. By the time it actually gets out there to the people, a lot of time has passed. And of course, the longer that time has passed, the more out of date the information is. But with managerial accounting, because it's only going to be used internally, it does not have to be audited. And as a result, we can get that information available much more quickly. So it has much more timeliness. Another difference has to do with time dimension. In financial accounting, we've always been focused on the past, things that have already happened. Whereas in managerial accounting, for the first time ever, we're going to start to look ahead to the future. And later on in the course, we're going to have some lectures on budgeting where we try to plan ahead and predict how much things are going to cost us. Another difference has to do with the focus of the information. In financial accounting, we tend to focus on the entire organization. Whereas in managerial accounting, sometimes we have more of a detailed focus where we look at individual segments of the business. So that's going to be a little bit different. It also has a difference in terms of the nature of the information. Everything that we record in financial accounting is always recorded in monetary units, whereas in managerial, it will be both monetary and non-monetary. Now, when we practice managerial accounting, one of the most important things is to be able to understand our costs. We're going to have a lot of different lectures and many different problems that we're going to solve throughout the rest of this course. And in many cases, to do so, 
we're going to need to understand our costs. And it's a good thing to do that because the more you understand cost, the better you're going to be able to make decisions for the company. And one of the best ways to understand all of our costs is to be able to classify these costs. So that's what we're going to talk about next. We're going to take a look at different cost classifications. One way to classify costs is either as fixed or variable. If a cost is fixed, that means it tends to stay the same, regardless of productivity. So for example, if we have a factory and we rent that factory, the rent is probably going to be a fixed cost. If we run the factory wide open 24 hours a day and produce thousands and thousands of units, we're going to have to pay the rent. And if we shut the factory down and send everybody home and don't do anything, we still have to pay the rent. So the idea is it is a fixed cost regardless of the productivity. Whereas variable costs, they actually go up and down. And not only do they go up and down, but they do so in relation to productivity. So a classic example of a variable cost would be materials. The more product we produce, we're going to have to buy more materials. The less we produce, the less materials we will buy. So that is a cost that's totally variable. It will fluctuate up and down in direct relation to the level of productivity. So those are our two first two classifications. Then you have direct versus indirect. A direct cost can be traced directly to a single cost object. So for example, once again, materials. That's a direct cost. We buy the material, we use it, and there we see it in the final product. We see directly where it goes. Whereas an indirect cost cannot be traced directly to a single cost object. So a good example there would be taxes. You know, we're always going to have to pay taxes. Why? It's just a requirement. We don't necessarily see directly where the money's going, but it is a, a cost that must be paid. So that's an indirect cost. So that's the difference there between those two categories. Then we have product versus period. Some costs are directly related to the final product, whereas other costs are not. So they would simply be classified as a period cost. Then we have a cost known as a sunk cost. Now a sunk cost simply means that the money has already been spent. So what does that mean for us? Well, if the money has already been spent, it means it's too late to do anything about it. So that's why sunk costs are irrelevant to our decision making. Then we have an out-of-pocket cost. This is the opposite. This is a cost where the money has not yet been spent. So these are relevant to decision making because we still have an opportunity to do something about this type of cost. And then we have the opportunity cost. Now an opportunity cost, this represents a choice between two different opportunities. And the choice of one means the sacrifice of another. In other words, we can't do two things at once. So if we own a building, you know, we could use the building ourselves to make a product or to conduct business, or we could simply rent the building out to some other company. We could only do one thing or the other. And which one is going to make us the most money? That's an opportunity cost. And those are definitely relevant to decision making. Now something else that's going to be a little bit different as we move forward is from here on out in this course we're going to also have a new type of company. Now remember back in Accounting 1 we started out with service companies that provided a service. Then we talked about merchandising companies that sold a product. Well now we're going to talk about a manufacturing company. This is a company that not only sells a product, 
but they actually make the product that they sell. And the accounting for a manufacturing company is going to be a little bit different. One of the differences is that instead of having only one inventory account, these companies actually have three different inventory accounts. Raw materials, goods in process, and finished goods. Now the raw materials, that's going to be the raw material. It could be wood, metal, fabric, all the raw materials that we're going to use to make the product. And then goods in process, that's going to be a product that is partially finished. And then obviously finished goods, that will be the final product that is ready to be sold. So you'll begin to see this. And all three of these are inventories, so they're all assets. In fact, one way to tell very quickly if you're dealing with a merchandise company or a manufacturing company, look at their balance sheet or look at their chart of accounts. Do you just see one inventory, merchandise inventory? Well, that means it's a merchandise company. But if you see all three of these, automatically you know this is a manufacturing company. Another difference is going to be a financial statement called a manufacturing statement. Now this is a statement that's only required for manufacturing companies. And in a statement like this, we will have different sections. We will have a section called direct materials. And it will show all the different materials and the cost associated with that. The cost of actually providing those materials for the product. Then we will have a section of direct labor, and that will show all the labor that was directly involved in making the product. Then we will have factory overhead, and those are all those additional expenses and costs that have to be paid for over and above the materials and the labor. And then finally, all three of these together will give us the cost of goods manufactured. And it's very important that we know that because that's going to help us understand and analyze the true cost of making these products.